In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And we have a great episode for you today. We are going to be talking about growth through acquisition, and we have some wonderful interviews with some incredible entrepreneurs talking about how they grew their business through acquisition. And Jessica, I am surprised, and I keep saying this, that more people aren't doing this with Transworld. Yes, there's so much opportunity to grow through acquisition, and we'll probably do a deep dive later on a different show just about the pros and the cons, but just looking at the market and how many baby boomers are going to be retiring in the coming years and and how that market's going to increase, there's going to be so much opportunity to purchase a business to help grow your business, and that could double your business overnight, and you could do an acquisition where you're acquiring a competitor, so you get customers or staff, or maybe you're doing a synergistic acquisition where you're buying a company that's like yours, but not a competitor. So you can add a different product or service and do upsells and cross-sells and increase your revenue that way. And just looking at the marketplace in general right now, financing is so key when you're buying a business and there's never been better financing opportunities, whether it's through a bank or their seller financing. Just overall, there's never been a better time to purchase a business to grow your own business. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Just an incredible opportunity now with SBA financing being uh, so low. And the SBA loves that. The SBA loves people that are in the industry already and they understand the business and they have management experience. And this is just, I mean, it is set up uh, for people to hit it out of the park growing their company. If you are a young person and we're talking young, say, you know, under 70 or under 60 years old and and even if you're 70 and you want to grow your business to eventually exit it, with baby boomers coming to the market, we just did a seller tsunami. We talked about the seller tsunami. We talked about baby boomers recently. Uh, coming to the marketplace in droves, we think there might even be a little bit of downward pressure on some of the multiples and, then, and some of the pricing. And this is an opportune time to go out there and grow. Right. And I think what we say is that once all the baby boomers have come to the marketplace, we're expecting a five to 10 times increase in the volume of businesses that are for sale. So it's just going to be a lot of businesses that are looking to be acquired. And even now, if we're looking at it, the reason for retirement, we ask people why they're selling their business and reason for retirement has been increasing 10% year over year in our office. So now more than half of the transactions we're doing is for those baby boomer and some, even some the older baby boomers that are retiring and that's why they want to get out. And, and I do agree, Andy, there's going to be some downward pressures and multiples and, you know, we'll talk about that. And, you know, say we have an insurance company like one of our interviews has today. What you can do though is you can have, you have this platform company already. You already have built a successful company. So when you're looking to acquire another company, when you're looking at that acquisition, you can eliminate a lot of expenses like overhead and things like that. And so your ROI on the acquisition is actually greater than another buyer that's going to walk in and, and buy the deal. So also growing through acquisition could help some of these sellers attain their purchase price that they're desiring. It And one of our interviews talks about a great strategy of, you know, you name the price, I name the terms. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. But if you think about this growth through acquisition strategy, it's really the same strategy that private equity uses. It's just on a smaller level. Right. So, you know, I always say you want to follow what other people are doing to make money and doing it successfully. So I don't know how many private equity groups and family offices out there, but there are literally thousands. Yeah. I mean, there's a few thousand of them out there and they're doing this for a reason. And very few people are doing this on the small business level. And we have a couple of guests today. I have Jonathan Jonathan Wolfson and Jeff Sofer, and they are coming in. They have bought four businesses. I even think working on a fifth. I'm not sure they're ready to talk about that yet, but they've in the landscaping space. So they, um, they'll talk about their businesses and they have, uh, incredible stories where they have and used Randy Bring very successfully to leverage themselves 
into four or five different businesses and built their business into an M&A size business. So there's a, I was talking to another buyer who's been in a large family, uh, multi-chain uh, restaurant business for years. He's looking to exit, kind of do his own thing. And he is just shocked. He's like, wait a second, I can buy businesses at two or three times and then roll them up into a big company that's doing a couple million dollars at EBITDA and sell for five or six or maybe four or five, six, whatever it is. Yes, it's amazing. And our guest today, Trent Daly, he's with IMG Insurance, Insurance Management Group out of Indiana. Um, he he really walks us through a great example of three different acquisitions that he's done and what he's taken away. And the, the two things are people and then also how to make the numbers work. He says, you know, it's never a math problem. And I love this. And I just mentioned it earlier that he says, you know, you name the price, I name the terms. And I think that's brilliant. And, and really, it does go back to valuation. And how we've talked about valuation before is that it's a quantity and a quality game. So if you're looking at acquiring small businesses, you could do so pretty affordably at pretty low multiples, as we've talked about before. But there is a jump once you get those bigger EBITDA or SDE values. So once you're over 500000 a million in EBITDA or SDE, your company is really worth a lot more. So you could acquire some smaller companies for, you know, two times earnings and add it to your current company and say like your current company is at 800,000 EBITDA or something like that. Now, when you're adding that smaller company at two times, you can automatically turn around and have a business that's worth a higher multiple or sell for a larger multiple down the road if you want. So there's, there's lots of opportunity, especially with all of these baby boomers coming to market. But I really do think looking at acquisitions in the small business market is a good opportunity at any time. Um, private equity firms really are looking at larger deals north of a million or two million in EBITDA. So there's always a lot of these great small companies or even solo producers that are looking to be acquired. And acquiring these companies through growing your business is, is really a great opportunity. I just can't say it enough. Yeah. And again, they get those economies of scale and they and and it is much easier to acquire a business, take it from me. I have acquired several business brokers over the years. It's much easier to acquire market share than it is to grow organically and cheaper a lot of times. Right. So when you grow through acquisition, you do avoid certain things. So you know, you know, you avoid the risk, you avoid the trials and errors. You don't have to make the mistakes on your own. You can find somebody who's already figured it out. And I also look at it as a time versus money problem. It's very hard to grow your company organically 50 to 100% year over year. Um, it's, you know, more, most companies grow at more like, you know, somewhere between five and 20%. So it can take longer to grow organically than it would through acquisition where you can literally increase the size of your business two times overnight. So I think this is a really good show, but it's also a great opportunity to go back and listen to our Seller Tsunami show and also our evaluation show. And I think the three of these really tie together and give you a good understanding of what the opportunity is. And I really can't say that word enough. It's just such a great opportunity. I think if you're a young entrepreneur and you're trying to make your mark, um, this is really a great strategy to grow your company to a, an amazing value. Yeah. And money's available again out there. And uh, yeah, and it's not always easy. And we'll talk a little bit about that today too, about some of the growing pains you have and some of the corporate culture things that you kind of got to merge. But if you're a strong entrepreneur, this is certainly something that you should be looking at. Let's get to it. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Welcome back, everybody. And today, as you know, we're talking about growth through acquisition and how to grow your business by acquiring another business. And we have a successful entrepreneur with us today, Trent Daly from Insurance Management Group um, out of Indiana. He is their CEO and president, and he's going to talk about how he grew his business through acquisition. So Trent, welcome to the show. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the business? Thank you, Jess. Um, we are headquartered in Indiana. We have about five locations. Uh, about 60 employees and 
Um, interesting topic. I've been through this uh, three times recently in the last five years. So we are a full service insurance agency. We provide insurance for businesses, both on the property casualty side, as well as the employee benefit side. And we also do personal lines. So so tell me a little bit about why you decided to grow through acquisition and, and how you've gone about finding those three deals that you've gotten done. In our industry, uh, probably similar to most industries, there's three three ways to grow. Uh, we have our organic, you know, in-house. We're trying to figure out how to drive new business. We hire new producers, new agents, um, and then acquisition. And they all three have a different flair and they all three have different costs and different risks. Um, for me personally, uh, it's relationships. So I found a lot of my deals just through networking and through people hearing about us. Something that's really important to us is culture and people and the way that we operate our business. And that's been able to drive uh, really good people. So we don't really have a set structure on how we find them. There's, it's a pretty active market right now in the insurance world. A lot of M&As are happening. Um, a lot of the smaller agencies are getting bought by the larger agencies. So if you want to go to a larger agency, um, there's only a few options. And then when you're looking for a good culture, uh, there's even less options. So. So the culture piece is super interesting. And I want you to talk a little bit about how you vet these deals. And and like we talked about, like you don't have a very systematic procedure, like the numbers obviously have to work, but you're much more focused on the people. So how do you vet these deals and decide if the culture is going to be the right fit? Really start, I sit down with the current owner, which in, in our industry, a lot of times is the insurance agent. He's been in the business a while and I, I try to figure out what his goals are. So I, fi- I find if I can sit down and find out what someone's goals are and what they want to happen, and if I can play a part in that and helping them achieve their goals, it's generally a good fit. So we definitely want to align on morals and values. Um, I'm looking for people that, you know, they're not going to come in and, and be derogatory or mean to the staff. I want people to really value uh, the team and really appreciate the team. And then ultimately it comes to just aligning goals. So Hey, Mr. Business Owner, what are your goals? What does this look like for you? What do you want to get out of this? What's your perfect picture in this transition? You know, because a lot of times it's an older person trying to get out of the business and they want to take care of their people. You know, is it important that your people have health insurance if they don't happen? Like, and then and then we just try to back into it. Like what I always tell people is it's never, I've never not been able to figure out the math problem. We can always figure out the math problem. It's the people problem. So how do we get good people? How do we attract good people to the company? How do we keep them there? And then how do we help you achieve your goals. I think it's solid points. Like, so when we talk about mergers and acquisitions, like what we're talking about with growth or acquisition is a merger, right? So you're bringing two companies together, two cultures together. And you're right. If the people don't work, then the numbers don't work because post-transaction, everything can, you know, go down the tubes. So I think focusing on the people, make sure you, you have alignment with the culture and things like you brought up, like health insurance, 401k benefits. Obviously, you want everything to be stable from one company transition to another. another. And you know, I've heard one of my friends has said, you also never want to buy a company where those people are making way more than your current team is because then you have to adjust all your current team salaries or give them additional benefits. So the people is very, very important. So talk a little bit about post-transaction. You know, what have you done to ease that transition in the past? How have you integrated the new team into your current team? I would say that's been probably the hardest thing. Um, we just did an acquisition uh, that we brought on seven people and two of them were owners. And so we got to know them very well and we opened up a new territory. So one of the reasons for acquisition is trying to get into a new territory. You want local people there. Um, and they're all great people, but trying to make them feel the energy and like part of the family when you're geographically in different places is really, really hard. So we've spent a lot of time operationally trying to figure that out. We have all the video conferencing and stuff, but really trying to make some an, uh, a completely separate operation that's operated separately that has their own ways and trying to make them feel valued, but try to get them into the system is, is really challenging. So we, we've approached that with a lot of intentionality, a lot of open conversations. Um, we're driving back and forth from there quite a bit as an executive team to kind of show that appreciation. But I would tell you we're about a year in on that acquisition and, and it's still a challenge for us. Um, we haven't done a ton of them, but we've done enough to know that, okay, here are some things that we've done wrong and here are some things that we can do better. Yeah, the integration piece, we don't talk a lot about on the show or post-transaction, but it, it is very, very important. And planning for that is is important as well. And when you're trying to get the deal done, you have to remember um, for those listening that a lot of these employees aren't aware that the deal's going on. They find out last minute. And um, 
you know, like we've talked about on the show, why confidentiality is important in a deal is because a lot of employees and customers equate um, the business business sale as the same risk as the business going out of business because it's change, right? And change scares people. So it is the hardest part is the integration piece after the deal is done and making it work. Um, but it will be worth it in the end, I'm sure, with your locations. And, you know, a year in is still pretty young for everything. So it's still working through. Um, so Trent, before before you leave, let's let's give some advice to entrepreneurs that are listening. So if they're they have established business and they're thinking about growing through acquisition, it's going to be their first deal. What would be some words of advice that you would give them? Outside of the people part, everyone seems to focus on the price. How much am I paying, and what's everyone else paying? And it just seems to be the focus. And I've kind of adopted a philosophy, as I said earlier. Um, I never can't figure out the math problem. So. Uh, you set the price, I set the terms. And what I've found is you can pay more for a company with the right terms. For for an example, if somebody wants to value their their business at two times revenue and they're saying, okay, well, my revenue is half a million, I want a million dollars. And I'm thinking, well, it's really 1.5 times. Okay, well, if you want if you want that, we're going to do it over 15 years instead of 10. And I generally set up most of these deals to cash flow themselves. So um, integrating culture is important and growth is important to get into a new territory. But if you can set up a deal to where it cash flows itself, uh, I would highly recommend that. And I, I wouldn't get, I guess my biggest advice is I wouldn't get so hung up on the numbers. So if you, if you're sitting in front of someone and they want to get out and they're trying to sell, really do your due diligence. You feel like they're the right people. And they're like, I think it's worth X and it's within reason just adjust the terms, extend the, extend the note, um, figure out a way to it where it's not really costing you any money. And, as we all know, cash flow is more important than profitability or anything else. So focus on the cash flow and see if it can cash flow itself. I love that. You set the price, I set the terms. I think it's great. And I think it also avoids a lot of conflict in these deals. We always talk about it. the deals have to be a win-win, right? They have to work for both parties. And, and it's always important to a seller to get a certain price. You know, they have this number in their head a lot of times. So I really do like that. Well, Trent, this advice has been great. Listeners, I hope you've really taken some notes and taken away some action items from this. Um, but we always ask all our guests um, to let us know how people can reach out to you, especially if they have any questions or insurance needs. So how can they get in touch with you if they want to chat more? I would say email is my best bet. So my email is trent at insmgt.com. insmgt.com. And feel free to drop me a note. I'll be happy to help in any way I can. Thanks for having me. Great. Well, thanks for coming on, Trent. And we'll drop that into the show notes too. And let's get back to the show. Hey, Andy, do you know what time it is? It's time for our deal of the week. Deal of the week. Sold. Welcome back. And today, as you know, we're talking about growth through acquisitions. And I'm joined by Aaron Fox from our Transworld North Boston office to talk about a deal that he recently closed that was what we call a roll-up or a growth through acquisition. So Aaron, welcome back to the show. And thanks for joining us today. Hello, Jessica. Thanks again for having me. So tell us a little bit about this deal you just closed. I think it was in the auto body industry, right? Sure. Yeah, this was this was a great one. We had, we had a lot of fun with this one because we had a buyer who was coming in who really knew that he wanted a business, wanted a business in the auto body space. Uh, had been He was second generation in his, uh, his family's business, and they had really been on an aggressive and successful growth track. So he was... He came to us and he was looking for an opportunity. Uh, we showed him one and it wasn't really quite fitting what they needed. So we started talking and we found that we had another listing that was a great fit for them. It had all the key pieces in place and would really work well to work uh, to go right along with their current business model. And when we were talking earlier, you said at first these uh, these buyers were trying to represent themselves in transactions, right? And not use the brokerage world? Correct. Yeah, they had uh, they had been running into some barriers trying to find some new locations. Uh, they did get frustrated, built one out on their own, and they were going through that. The permitting process was a nightmare. So they realized that it was a much easier path just to buy an existing location and convert it to their model. So they reached out and started doing all of their marketing uh, mailings and had one of their staff members going to actual operating auto body shops to talk to them about the potential acquisitions, which quickly turned into a uh, little bit of a nightmare because <laughs> when you walk in from a competing business, 
there's automatically the guard is up and, yeah. and yep. they, they, they were, it wasn't really a welcome reception. We'll put it that way. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So it, they really, they love working with us and uh, we were able to show them a few different opportunities and reach out to uh, other brokers in our network to discuss opportunities that they may have coming to market. So we were able to facilitate buyer seller meetings that, they both knew what was going on. They knew the confidentiality was protected. They knew that this wasn't, this was a vetted buyer who was really looking to do this and wasn't just trying to find out what their customer base was or potentially do the detrimental uh, growth through uh, obtaining employees. That uh, is really a unfortunate uh, area of a lot of industries. Right. Right. And I think that those are all really important things, especially if you're going through acquisition, um, you know, in, and you're trying to acquire competitors, it's extra sensitive. So tell us a little bit about the financing and the numbers on this deal. How did it come together? So this was, uh, uh, the financing on it was, uh, when we looked at it, we knew it was going to have to be a seller financing deal because, um, it did follow, a, a lot of the industry norms where a lot of the uh, revenue was coming in to the owner through various streams and the books and records were a little bit of a complete mess because it had been in business for well over 40 years. And the I think they used the same accountant since day one. So there was mm-hmm. a lot of green sheets. There was a lot of stuff that the SBA would just have had a panic attack if we had tried to forward it to them. And uh, without, you know, as we always say, good books and records, um, mm-hmm. we, you gotta you gotta be prepared for alternative financing methods. All right, all right. So, so seller financing is not a bad option, though, right? Seller financing was a fantastic option for this, and actually ended up uh, even working better for the seller because he was uh, had no exit plan whatsoever in place. He was over eighty years old. And he was looking for basically residual income for himself and his family in retirement. And the tax implications would have been catastrophic the way he had everything set up. So the seller financing is probably one of the key pieces that actually made this deal happen. Awesome. Well, that's that's great to, to hear. So what did the business end up selling for? And what was the SDE on the business? So uh, the business sold um, at a full ask of 479 and uh the SDE on the business was coming in uh about two about 260 on this good good so it was a, it was a good deal for it sounds like a good deal for the seller get some residual income in retirement and then a fifth location for the buyers so they can keep growing so again another good deal for good people right absolutely and they were excited that they had they found a way to acquire and open a new location, get people in place and start going forward with a 40, basically a 48 hour turnkey operation. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Aaron, for sharing the story and for joining the show. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Hey, welcome back everybody. And we have very special guests right now. Uh, We have three guests, actually. We have, my partner, Randy Bring, uh, here in the studio with me. Hey, Randy, welcome. Hello, everybody. And we have basically Hall of Fame customers, entrepreneurs, Jonathan Wolfson and Jeff Sofer uh, from multiple companies, which they have worked with us over the years to build their company. We are talking about growth through acquisition and uh, Jeff and Jonathan are the poster children for this, children, child, men uh, for this. And uh, welcome to the show, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having us. Hi there. Hello on this terrific Friday. Oh, there you go. And they are in the yeah. tree business. So we could talk about that uh, right off the bat. We could talk about, tell us your story a little bit. I, it's an interesting story. Uh, you guys are related, which is even more interesting. And uh, you didn't meet till later in life. So give us a little bit of background of how you got in the business together. Uh, so how we got in the business together was that uh, Jonathan... Uh, and I met 12 years ago. I am 50 years old. Jonathan is 33. And uh, we share the same father, but not the same mother. Uh, we have two other siblings in between us. 
And uh, we basically just, he moved here. We started working together and it has become like an amazing sort of partnership where uh, we just started growing, like you said, by acquisition. Um, we actually got um, a bucket truck for our first, uh, the, the business that I originally had. We, I, we actually utilized a lift and a bucket truck to do holiday decorations with because the original business that I have is a flower shop. We did interior plant maintenance, uh, exterior landscape maintenance, irrigation, and Christmas decorations. And we ended up uh, getting a bucket truck because Jonathan was like, well, you use a bucket truck every year to do all the lighting that we do, all this exterior lighting. So I think we should own our own bucket truck. And boy, I did not want to spend that $50,000 to buy it. He found one from Delaware, it was like the Delaware Lighting Company or something that used it, you know, it's like a Florida Power and Light uh, for Delaware. And he's like, I think we should do it. And he was averaging in how much we would make over the next couple of years with it by you know, dollar cost averaging it. And uh, I did not want to do it. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to uh, let this idea happen because maybe this is the thing to do. Maybe I don't know everything. I was so used to working by myself and doing things myself and running the show myself. And I just naturally just wanted to sort of let him uh, have suggestions and make decisions and, you know, run things also. And he was absolutely right. Of course, that worked out very well with the bucket truck. We needing it. We've used it for years and years and years and got our money way out of it. But the most important thing about it and the most crazy thing about it is that we received a letter uh, from Jim Sherlock from Sherlock Tree Company. Uh, and he sent this letter, I guess, to, I don't know, all the tree companies in the area. We, we weren't a tree company. But he saw, he saw our bucket truck over doing lights and doing things or around town, maybe in a traffic light. Wow. And it had our name on it. And he sent us a letter saying he wanted to sell his company. And literally that is how all this entree into the tree world and even more extensive landscape work and pest control and fertilization and all started just from that. And if I wouldn't have uh, allowed Jonathan to make the impression on me to just spend the damn money, do it, send over the 50 grand and let's go with it. And he wouldn't have been innovative enough to be like, listen, you need to do this. You know, this is how we need to do things. So really that's how it's been all along. It's, I make suggestions to him. He's open-minded to me. He makes suggestions to me. I'm open-minded to him. It's both. So, it's amazing how when you when you open your mind to certain opportunities and suggestions and things, they really can transpire into so much more. Where when we've bought these other businesses, it's not just the singular business that you're purchasing that it's important. It's actually how it's going to work with everything else and how it's really going to transform what your situation is. I mean, I certainly couldn't have guessed that buying a bucket truck for holiday lighting and we did some tree work and landscaping would transpire into buying a business. But that is what happens when you put yourself out there in situations and you try to grow the business and you try to work outside your comfort zone, good things do happen to you, but they don't happen by luck. They happen by hard work. And when you work hard and you stay focused and you stay diligent, things do come together, but it's not luck. It's because you're working hard and because you're working hard at it and you're, because you're out there making new connections. You just don't really ever know who you're actually going to meet or how it's actually going to connect somebody and they move from this company to that company. And it's, it's really um, been intricate in, in our growth potential moving forward now as far as when we buy new equipment, when we're buying these new businesses, you know, I would probably would say um, to all those different entrepreneurs out there, anyone thinking of buying a business that already has one currently, the margin, the net of the business that you're purchasing is not the most important um, unit of measure when you're doing all this. It is your potential with adding that bit business to you that is really the unit of measure that you need to be most concerned about right. because if you, you don't have lots of confidence in yourself that you're going to be able to grow the business two times five times ten times whatever your aspirations then it shouldn't even be before you at all but you also shouldn't be concerned if the business is making very low margins and you're used to making high margins when you know what you can do 
you know, you need to have lots of confidence and charisma and what you can, you know, perform. Well, you guys so do. Need to have the, oh, no, go ahead. No, I go ahead. I mean, you know, charisma. listen, you, you, you've done a great job and you took you took the leap in that first business. And so talk a little bit about, you know, you you, you wound up partnering with Transworld and, and Randy and you've bought several other businesses and we've talked offline and you've, you've said you've, you've gotten, like you said, you, it, you are opportunistic in those opportunities and you've thought of, you know, it, it's not the easiest fit, but when you, when they fit and you find great people like you did uh, when you bought frames, um, you know, it really turns into something wonderful. Yeah. I was gonna, go, go ahead. Jeff. Sorry, I was going to just follow up to what you were saying, John, and just say that, you know, we've taken calculated risk. You know, it's risk. Like, you have to have the stomach for this stuff. Right. So everything that John was saying is right, but to even get to the point where you actually own it and you're in the driver's seat, like, you have to actually make the decision to, you know, do it. And a lot of people, I feel like, um, don't actually get to the point of actually doing it because they're afraid or there's fear or what have you. And what has helped us is having someone who is a very, I feel, a very learned, uh, tried and true advisor to us. We haven't just looked at Randy Bring as um, someone who just knows businesses and is knowledgeable in how business functions. But, you know, he would go through like, you know, like playing with us down the road, like explaining how this would match with that and how this could go into this and you know, just sort of letting me and John, like letting it just flow between us to talk about how we would do this, how we would do that, how we'd figure this, how we'd figure that. And, you know, we've looked at so many different businesses and we've even been on phone calls interviewing, you know, owners and doing all different sorts of things with him, with us. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but that's part of the risk. It's like you have to, you have to have like the stomach and like the, the guts deal with the risk, but you also can't get so excited about it that you just like jump at the first opportunity. Like you have to have something that fits perfectly and, you know, you want to make the right decision because it can be, if you don't make the right decision about the right business for you, it can be like a huge, huge, huge bump in the road or a huge problem. Right. Hey, Jeff, it's a, it's a great opportunity for, for me to jump in and, and just comment on my experience in, in working with you and your brother, Jonathan. Uh, the, you better the, be nice, Randy. We're on the air here. Well, I'm nice. going to try to be nice, but, but let me okay. say this, that it's a unique experience because you are, you are unique individuals. Um, so often as business brokers, as intermediaries, we work with a buyer and, and the buyer gives you the directive. This is what it is I'm going to pay. And this is when I want to close. And, and this is that. But in your case, our relationship, I think pretty much from the beginning, was very, very different. You brought me into your world with you and your brother. And, and we've had so many discussions where, where the, basically the three of us looked at a business. And, and to me, it, it was so interesting and fascinating to, to hear uh, your, thought, your thought process and, and then to to listen perhaps to, to some of the, um, some of the advice that, uh, that I might offer and then to sort of almost collectively come to a decision, uh, as a team, you guys are, you guys are tough, you're hard, you're fun, you're funny, but most of all, you're very, very good, strong entrepreneurs. And, and, uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and, and, and really over the five or six years watching you evolve as business people and get stronger with every deal that we look at. And certainly with every deal that you buy, it's been fun. Thank you, Randy. Thank, Thank you. For Thank you, Randy. I, w I would like to transition from that into uh, going through Randy, some of the transactions that we've done with you guys just to see how I maybe mean, people don't understand the different types of acquisitions you can make. And they don't all look the same, but obviously Transworld is able to help in so many different ways. Yeah, that's okay. So, but you got to start with the very first one, the fast food restaurant that you got out of. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, that's actually how like we I were said, introduced. Yeah, we, I don't think, and we didn't dodge a bullet either. We actually took the bullet. And then I think you're the one actually that took the bullet out, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like it goes back to what I was saying before about you can make the wrong decision that either – 
it really it just affects you in all different ways depending on what that decision is and that was not a good decision so to to paint a picture of the kind of person that randy bring is i think randy i think the phone call i think went is you got a phone call from chuck sofer saying that we have a business we're looking to sell and uh we need to meet and he said I think something along the lines of we need to meet right now. And he asked if you could be there in how long? He said right now. And I said, can I meet you this afternoon? And he said, right now. I don't know what was going on. It was literally <laughs> eight minutes from my office to your office and that restaurant. It was eight minutes. I don't think, I don't think you guys were off the phone with me yet. And I was literally there. <laughs> All right. And the, uh, the, the type of character that that shows, which this was, there was no relationship at that time. This was, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago, whatever it is. And there was no relationship at that time. It was just a call and a lead. I mean, that's somebody who really takes um, their job seriously to the, like the most professional level of, you know, people. Because obviously you must have heard something that was urgent in his voice and not, you know, bullshit of like, you know, somebody's trying to do something that there was an actual problem and we needed a solution. I did. Well, I, heard I think something. also that we, I think also we saw like a, a commonality in that, but how John and I handle things. And so I think, we, you know, in a way we're like impressed with that originally. You already, you already had us when you showed up right then. It's like, how could you not go with this guy? He's here. Right. So not to go into too much detail with all of the transactions, but I would say in a very short time, Randy was able to sell a business that we had that was currently losing money every single month and was able to transition it into selling the business to a qualified buyer um, that worked for us. So I think that, that as far as the task at hand for somebody like Randy to figure out how to do it, that seems almost like the hardest task. How do you sell a business and you have a seller that's going to be okay selling it when it's losing money already and to sell it for less than they even want? Right. You know, these, are, these are difficult situations. So from that really came a great um, understanding and relationship of Randy's skills and how he could really help us strategically moving forward. So after that, um, we – did we have Sherlock at the same time, Jeff, or no? No. No, we did. We had both. No. Yeah. So we actually it. bought – we bought Sherlock before um, – while we were owning a Miami subs restaurant. Right. So that was before Randy, actually, whenever we purchased that and we navigated that ourselves. Um, I, just, I just know the old, I wouldn't, which I really wouldn't recommend to anybody. It doesn't mean that you can't do it as far as like, you know, finding a business, buying, closing, all that kind of no, stuff. But we didn't have it. We didn't have the, you don't have that luxury. Things are available when they're available, right. and that's part of it. You have to take the opportunity when yep. it's available. It's not convenient, you know? So you wouldn't recommend that to do to someone, but we wouldn't have recommended to do that to ourselves, but we had to. At each time, something's been, like, almost inconvenient, well, and we've had to do it just because if you want this opportunity, you got to take it. That's what I feel like. Right, but, of course, while but that's going on, you guys are well aware of the professional space that you're in, and yeah. uh, being in the in the in the tree business, uh, you know that that can open a lot of opportunities for you for for other sort of synergistic add-ons, and yeah. uh, and I think that's really where you guys your eyes began to open, and you began looking at at other kinds of businesses that would complement your core business, and that I think is a good part of your story, so that if you look today yeah. and you look backwards and you see you've got all these different yeah. uh, essentially standalone companies, but they're, they feed off of each other and they're divisions really of, of a core business. And that's yeah, really line, what you and I have been working on over the last uh, right. five years are these different the bottom line for me. The bottom line for me is, is that I know ultimately that my brother and I, I know that we can figure out and I know we can identify, figure out, make it work, profitable, et cetera, everything that we need to do. But having someone like you, Randy, is, has been instrumental because 
you do need smart people do need to surround themselves with smarter people and people that know certain other things. And you have to get other people's opinions and you have to listen to logic and facts and then just opinions. You have to, because uh, that way you make the most informed decision and then you can make a calculated risk. Right. To me. It's You're very kind risk, and complimentary, but obviously I feed off of the energy that's coming yeah. from, from yeah, yeah, yeah. my and you guys, yeah. so you looked at a couple businesses and you took the risk. So what was that kind of decision making like? So we obviously, we sold the Miami subs to continue with the, the add-ons to our business. We sold the Miami subs. We had Sherlock Tree Company and Jim Dreckel. Uh, we were performing tree trimming on a very small scale of time uh, back in 2013. We did landscape maintenance. We did interior plant maintenance fresh flowers, botanical, holiday decorating, all of that stuff. And um, through just networking, we got an opportunity for a pest control business that uh, typically are not on the market for very long. You know, pest control yeah, businesses. Very highly sought after. Reoccurring revenue. Reoccurring revenue. Uh, very easy, systematic model, so to speak, but hard to grow really aggressively just because the point of entry. It's lots of, lots of units. Right. So uh, we got the connection and me and Jeff made the conscious decision that we shouldn't be penny wise and pound foolish and we should hire somebody like Transworld, but specifically Randy, who we have a relationship to help make the best decision to understand, you know, what is normal in the industry as far as margin? What is realistic when we start you know, what the person's asking for, how we can come up with a calculation because every business model is not unique. So obviously there are industry standards for margins. There's owners uh, standards for what they want to make. And that's all obviously important information, but you also have to be kind of brought into reality of what you should expect and where you can go. And it really does take multiple ideas and things to think about to really come up with the best option. So me and Jeff, we're lucky enough. We have each other to bounce ideas off of, and that's great. But also too, we don't have that third perspective of buying and selling businesses. We don't do that. We look to buy businesses, but we're not buying and selling them on a regular basis. What, right. What's unique about this business that we can learn? So it, like I said, it really has been um, great to have just a resource uh, and a connection like this. So from that, we purchased a pest control business called Maximum Pest and Fertilization. Um, and so we purchased that business. For about a year after that, we uh, were ready. We strategically added that on, and we were looking to head north um, to actually have more of a foothold in the HOA community. So we wanted to buy another tree business because at that time we had probably four times grown the the tree portion of our business right. and really felt a lot of success and didn't realize the amount of movement that might actually be in that particular space. So we uh, hired Transworld and Randy to find the tree business for us. We actually found one. It's called Frames Tree Service. And small world it is out there. My brother Jeff knew um, Dennis Forgione at Frames Tree Service from 20 years ago, somebody with extreme integrity um, and knowledge and pride. And we ended up making a deal um, with him. He's actually still working with us now, two years down the road. Uh, so it really has worked out amazing. Um, we added, at that point, adding the business, we have uh, now had a stronger area. We went through a full year, calendar year with that business or more. And we've doubled that region um, within the first year and a half or a year, um, which really is a testament of our aggressive nature, but also to uh, how strategic partnerships, like when we've added frames, really it gave us the opportunity to make these kind of moves because without the risk came no reward. And it might not have even have been double you know, it would still be great if it was 20% because to occupy a new region and sustain a new business is hard enough, but to grow it is even better. Yeah. So after two years of 
uh, frames tree service, we wanted to strategically add on another landscape maintenance uh, company uh, or tree company. So we kind of had a, a wide range that we were interested in obviously bringing into our, our uh, network of companies. And uh, this business with Randy was Diaz Brothers Landscape Services. And we you know, found them, have negotiated a deal and closed on that deal just a month ago now. And it's, again, another perfect example of, you know, being most concerned about the strategic nature of it versus the actual uh, nitty gritty. So that business now we've taken on. Um, and Randy, you don't know this information yet, so this would be interesting for you to hear. Oh, we took, took the business on a month ago, Randy, and of course their margins were not in line with where we want them to be. But with that being said, we have lost zero customers. We've kept every single person. They know obviously about our family of companies now. And in 30 days, we have added, which they all haven't started yet, but they all have approved us to start the work, we've added four hundred plus thousand dollars worth of new business oh uh, annually. 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 Well, it, as amazing as it sounds, by coincidence, I was at a networking <laughs> event in Boca Raton last night, and I actually uh, connected with the president of a homeowners association whose landscaping account you just landed. And it's, it, it's, it's just <laughs> uh, absolutely unbelievable. And I said, you, you got to be kidding me, Diaz brothers. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. Well, I'm going to let you guys settle down with Diaz a little bit before we begin to, uh, to look at our next acquisition. Cause I got a couple of ideas for you. You know, so as we wrap this up guys, and I, and I always said, we've talked offline and we talked about that. I am surprised that more people don't do this. More people aren't buying businesses to grow their businesses uh, like you have. And, and you've both have said to me that you're kind of shocked that that's not happening more. Yeah. So if, yeah. if, if people were considering doing it, what would be your advice uh, to them? Um, my advice would be that you got to find a trusted advisor and you have to figure out what, like, what doesn't just work for you now, but what do you want to do that you like? You have to definitely like it in order to give it the most you got because no one's given the most they got to something they don't like. Yeah. So just because something makes money doesn't mean you buy it. You have to find something that you like. And then you have to find an advisor that helps you find something, a healthy, good company that has the bones and has everything that you need in it. Um, and I would just say that you go for it because if you don't take risks, you don't have guts and you don't take risks to try to do things, you're, nothing's ever going to happen. So the truth is, the old saying is, you, know, you, you put in a lot of hard work and things happen. It really is the truth. You got to put in a lot of hard work. And if you put in a lot of hard work and you're smart about it, you have a good advisor, everything really works out. That's what I think. That's as easy as it is for me, basically. Yeah, well, the two of you sound like you work really hard, and 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 hard work makes up for a lot of bad things that might happen yeah. in transactions. But yeah, yeah, and talk yeah. about that. I mean, you guys are working really hard, and you you do have complementary skills. So I would recommend to anybody who's out there right now that is in a business where they're wanting to expand it and they're wanting to expand it aggressively. I think that you really have to think of where you want to be long term and to not think short term. So a lot of times people are concerned, well, if I add this, then, you know, what if it doesn't do as well? And I make, you know, I have to pay the loan myself and then the business can't afford to do it. What I say to that is, so what? You know, you want to grow your business. You want to bring on strategic partnerships and people and locations I, and expand your service. I can't I hear think, you. Do I come down there or just... Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think that um, you do it because the thing is you don't need to be thinking short term for what your capabilities are. I think, you know, people that are confident in their industry and they're looking to grow, it is absolutely an added skill that if you really want to grow to be large, a large company of any, of any type, all companies eventually acquire somebody. So you can start small and grow to do something big, you certainly don't have to acquire, 
but the skills that you learn along the way about your industry and about people and about process by adding on these businesses is invaluable. And if you want to grow and double, triple, go from 1 million to 10 to whatever, it's a super important skill. So the lessons that you learn are invaluable, I think. Yeah. Well, that's all great stuff. Guys, why don't you give a little bit of a plug uh, for your businesses and uh, how to get in touch with you. And, uh, and I really appreciate you coming on today. So thank, thank you so much for having us, everyone. I'm Jonathan Wolfson uh, with Sherlock Tree Company. We have Diaz Brothers Landscape Services. Maximum Pest and Fertilization, and Jim Threckle Botanicals. We're here for all of your botanical needs from South Miami all the way up to Jupiter. We service the whole area. We have three offices and a staff of 100. So we have more than enough professionals to handle any and all of your all of your needs. Uh, you can call me directly on my cell phone if you ever need anything, 561-245-0933. Uh, or you can call our office at 954-788-4000 or look us up on the web. Uh, for our tree company is sherlocktree.com. Uh, look forward to hearing from you people. Thank you guys so much for having us too. And I am Jeff Sofer. Sorry about that. I'm Jeff Sofer and my phone number is 561-702-4521. And that is my cell phone. I answer it seven days a week at any time. Love what I do. Happy to do it mostly happy to do things with my brother. We have a great time doing it. We feel a lot of pride in these businesses. And, uh, you know, I'm 50, between 50 and dead. How do I want to spend every day of my life and what I want to do? I want to do good things, make people feel good, solve lots of problems for everybody. And whatever you need, give us a call. So thanks a lot, Andy. And thanks, Randy. Thank you, guys. That, that was perfect. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure, guys. And thanks very, very much for everything. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And yes, it is Listing of the Week, and I have a very special guest with me. I have Julie Brigman from Trans World Business Advisors of North Florida. Julie's been with us for a long time, very successful broker. And she has a very interesting business. We had a meeting this morning, and I said, Julie, you got to come on the podcast and tell the listeners all about it. And uh, it's such an interesting business. I think someone might even want to move to Florida for it because uh, people love to do what this business does. So tell us all about it. Oh, I'll be happy to, Andy. This is such a cool business. Um, the guy, he, he makes, he actually manufactures uh, here in Jacksonville, Florida, fishing rods. And he has a fishing rod for every type of fish there are, there is um he manufactures fishing rods starting at 139 dollars that actually compete with the fishing rods that are made much less with much less quality in china and other other foreign countries he, he uh he's all usa made but they started 139 dollars but he's got fishing rods that you can search by species by techniques by style um, whether you're saltwater, whether you're, you're freshwater, they're, they're made out of a special um, composite, and it's a composite fiber tubular manufacturing. I'm learning about this. So it's uh, really exciting. Yeah, and it sounds, listen, you know, people love those kind of businesses, and they... Um so they love those kind of businesses, you know, especially to get into the fishing industry. But you were saying that uh, they could do anything. They could do any kind of business. Actually, you could. It, th this would fit with, with anything sports related. The, the, the facilities are very underutilized. The facilities are absolutely beautiful. Um, you, you could do aviation, tow bar type manufacturing, um, aircraft manufacturing, anything that, that requires any kind of composite fiber tubular product you could do because he's got the ovens in place and all that good stuff. And you were saying um, the business is he, really clean, right? Oh my God. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I've worked in, I've worked in, in manufacturing companies that did millions of dollars a year that did not even come close to, to, to what this one looks like in terms of cleanliness, orderliness. He had me, you know, I, I asked him, well, oh, isn't this going to be hard for just a, the regular guy off the street to, to figure out how to do this? And he says, 
He says, no, you go look at that oven over there. There's a huge oven that he dries these rods in. And he goes, I want you to walk up, pick up a piece of paper, read it, turn the oven on, turn it off, and let it cool down. And I go, well, I can't do that. And he said, just go do it. So I read, I read it, and I did exactly what it suggested. And I was able, at that time, without asking him any questions, uh, to turn the oven on, turn it off, and then cool it down. Wow. So he's got at every station he's got he's got written instructions at every station where somebody could literally walk up and and operate the equipment. Great. So how much is he asking for the business? Eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. And uh, so and you were saying that he uh, you were telling me before the interview that he has a, a side business too that's e commerce. So it's a great little business that could be expanded, right? That's correct. That's correct. Right now, what what they're what they're selling on on the e-commerce site is the pieces and parts and components to to building your own rod. Should you want to do that, or sh- should a dealer want to build their own rod? Right. So so that's included in it. Great. So uh, is there any terms? Does is he offering financing? The owner is open. Uh, of course, a lot of it depends on, on the buyer. But, yeah, he's open to, to looking at some, some kind of financing. Excellent. So if someone wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Well, they could call me on my cell, which is attached to my head, 24-7, area code 904-874-1059. Sounds like a great business, very interesting business. Uh, people love the fishing industry. Uh, and you could even make golf clubs, but we didn't even get that. that. So uh, great business. Thanks for coming on today, Julie. All right, Andy. Thank you. You have a good one. Thanks for tuning into our show today. If you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe through your favorite podcasting app and leave us a review. If you have questions or suggestions for the show, visit us at tworld slash the deal board or email us at the deal board at tworld.com.